I can bring you in warm. Or I can bring you in cold. This is where the fun begins. Hello everyone and welcome back to Jedi Knights, the official Star Wars podcast of Joy Clicks. I'm your host today, Christian Buckley, joined as always by my co-moderator, my co-pilot, my Chewbacca flying the show with me, Mike Connors. In the in the co-pilot seat, as always, except for when I'm in the pilot seat and you're in the co-pilot seat. But this time I'm in the co-pilot seat. How are you, Christian? <laughs> I'm doing well, Mike. I'm doing well. Uh, what defines the the seat of co-pilot versus pilot in the millennium falcon do we know i don't think there is i think um if we if we look at you know the star wars history and the star wars canon you can see that whoever occupies those two seats basically the millennium falcon can't fly without them so Mm -hmm. i think the co-pilot is just as important as the pilot Mm -hmm. what do you think yeah i think i think so right i mean like we've seen instances where the falcon was run solo for a little bit i think right like ray flew it a little bit to get off jakku by herself sloppily and then i think i think han might have flown it himself at one point in the original trilogy uh yeah that might be true i know definitely land of calrissian flew it himself at the end of Empire Strikes Back. Sure. Uh, and in Episode 7, when they're escaping Jakku, Ray does say that it's hard to fly without a co-pilot mm-hmm. uh, because Finn is in the in the gunner's seat. So it's in canon that, you know, a co-pilot is, an, is, is maybe not necessary, but extremely helpful when you're, when you're flying that ship. Just... So, just like running a podcast you know i'm sure you can agree because we but we share the pilot seat from time to time uh doing this show by yourself would probably be very difficult (laughs) it would be difficult and that's why that's that's why we're both here together to to prop one another up and to bring the most relevant and and hot takes about star wars news that exist on the internet and that's that's what joy clicks jedi knights is all about absolutely so Mike, this week of Star Wars is very light, so we'll kick off. Um, have you been doing any Star Wars related things lately? Are you just ready for the new content this fall? Is it a is it a slow period for you? It's a slow period for me, definitely. I think coming off the high of the Bad Batch, right? You are like in the Star Wars groove like every single week, and now that there's like not anything new, I haven't necessarily been sort of focusing in on that. Uh, I always. You know, I always say whatever video uh, video game I'm playing at the time, and it changes seemingly from week to week. I'm actually playing Forza right now. For some reason, I'm in a Forza mood. Uh, has nothing to do with Star Wars. Uh, but thinking about it, it would be cool to have a Forza Star Wars crossover, uh, you know, in space or something like that. Or maybe that's just Squadrons, <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Star Wars, uh, what, they've only got pod racing, right? Is that their racing? Okay, yeah, actually, yeah, well, like, yeah, a Forza style pod racing, maybe. Ooh. You, you nailed the, you nailed it right on the head. That'd be cool, actually. That'd yeah. be really cool. Yeah, man, Microsoft, get working on that. You, you got, <laughs> you got some friends at LucasArts, I'm sure. Just get, get that going. That'd be very cool. Um, I mean, I, I've, I've, I think we do need a new Star Wars racing game. Oh yeah, yeah. Whether it looks like, whether it looks like Forza or not, whatever. But just you know, we need some. <laughs> What what if it looks like um, Bombad Racer? Isn't that the one? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was, that's like the Mario Kart esque kind of one, right? Like, yeah. Am I thinking of the right? Like thing? the giant yeah. heads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we need to. You know that that gives me like really hard. Um, what's that like Nickelodeon game that they're making? That's sort of like Super Smash Brothers. Nickelodeon uh, All Star. You Brawl. know what I'm. Yeah, the Bombad Racer gives me like heavy Nickelodeon All Stars Brawl vibes. Sure, um, not a bad thing, mm-hmm. but <laughs> uh, we do have some Star Wars games in the news for sure. We will be talking about that this episode, uh, as some of the news roundup does exist this week. So there is Lego Star Wars updates, some comments about Book of Boba Fett, an interesting behind the scenes look at the Mandalorian and some potential leaks but we'll we'll get to all that after we open the show the way we normally do with our segment from the jedi archives where we go to the sacred text of wikipedia to pick something educate each other ourselves and the audience 
on something in Star Wars, be it Legends or Canon. Mike, kick us off this week. What did you choose from Wikipedia? Well, uh, sometimes I have help from the Wikipedia homepage. Um, ever since they did their own like redesign of the website, I've kind of lost where the random article button is. Yes, yeah, um, long-time listeners, yeah, long-time listeners of the show will know that Christian and I for a while really loved that button. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I did find this on the homepage. Uh, it's a planet. Planet goes by the name of Korm, uh, K H O R M. Uh, it's a frozen planet. This is the legends. This is in legends, I guess. Mm-hmm. A frozen planet located in the midrim, home to the Kormi species. Is one of the few planets that can train that contain an extremely rare ore called agrocyte that could be used to enhance the power of turbo lasers. During the Clone Wars between the Republic and the CIS, Kormai warlord Unger Gout betrayed his people and enslaved them to mine agrocyte for Dooku. This resulted in a major Republic offensive led by Plo Koon, Kit Fisto, and Tot at the Battle of Korm, and the Republic wins. So, I mean, that's very interesting. To me, I... You know, I, I love these, like, little legend stories, um, especially when they, like, flesh out the Clone Wars in a way that, like, not, not to say that the show didn't do this, but just, like, you know, different scenarios that these characters could be in. Um, and I thought this was just a really fun pick. Uh, it's, a, it's a planet that I'd never heard of before. Um, so big, big time stuff. Looks looks pretty cool. Um, so that's Korm for you. Very interesting. Yeah, Korm has never come across my path as a star wars fan but you know i love plo Koon, so here and he had some adventures over there is very exciting definitely i guess it is in canon but you know hasn't really been discussed that much so very nice uh well i pulled something from wikipedia that is an item you can purchase specifically it is gold squadron lager oh <laughs> an alcoholic beverage i assume yes it is a gold colored alcoholic beverage served at oga's cantina in on the planet of batu in 34 aby the lager was suitable for human consumption and it was considered a lighter option than gamorian ale so wow those gamorians really they really like their hops don't they they really do <laughs> um <laughs> but no i i again the theme of some of my picks lately have been Galaxy's Edge related because, again, doing lots of research. But the park has a bunch of um, partnerships with uh, like brands of uh, breweries and stuff that have dedicated uh, brews for Galaxy's Edge. One of them, I know, there's like a um, spiced cider smuggler thing that Angry Orchard does. Um, there's that's cool yeah there's a handful of them uh which i think is pretty cool so and you can buy these at the canteen at the cantina on galaxies at galaxy's edge yes it is it is on tap you walk up in your han solo cosplay you'd be like give me the the gold squadron and then they'd be like i right, captain and then spend another hundred dollars do you know um yeah another hundred dollars on a pint of beer uh do you know what brewery it makes the gold squadron lager or whatever um i'm not sure but i can check oh okay just just wondering what do you think um you would go for something at the cantina that is like in line with this or more of the mixed cocktails they have in the star wars universe honestly i would be i would be lying just if i said that i wouldn't want to try both you know, mm-hmm. uh, I feel like you have to you have to get a good taste of the fare, and just sticking to one one category of drink, I think, is just really limiting. And when you're on Batu, you're gonna want to like you know, you want to taste the local taste the local flavors, see the local sites. Yeah, and um, yeah, I, I, that's that's definitely why I'd be drinking both mixed drinks and ale in no particular order, mm-hmm. which may be really may make for a really bad time. Yeah. But we'll see. And you know what they say, <laughs> win in Batu. But I do have um right. some some updated <laughs> information. So it is fourteen bucks for this. Um Okay. It is a light gold lager brewed by Blue Point Brewery. It has hints of lavender and oh. plum. That's fun. Blue Point Brewery is actually 
uh, from where my family is from, Long Island. So that's fun. Uh, I'm very familiar with them. Cool that they're making a brew for Star Wars, Star Wars land. Yeah, you're gonna <laughs> have to make some custom order for for you, the the resident Long Island Jedi Knights host. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, great version of from the Jedi Archives this week. Let's get into some news. Uh, there is a piece of new Star Wars Disney Plus media that dropped since the last recording. I have yet to watch it. Mike, I don't know if you have watched it, but it is the Mandalorian Gallery episode specifically about the Luke Skywalker process of the reveal, how it was like to record on set, the de-aging tech, interviews with everybody about the finale of Mando Season 2. Did you get a chance to watch this? Um, I watched probably like the first 10 minutes and then I fell asleep. That's a common theme with, with me. Um so I didn't get to like experience the full thing. So maybe maybe the both of us will have to revisit this at some point and talk about it. But um, talk, I've heard a lot about like you know we've seen a lot of the chatter online on Twitter and whatnot. And uh, one of the biggest takeaways for me, and this is something that we knew before, but it was fun to sort of like see some of the concept art, was uh, Dave Filoni's joke that Plo Koon was coming to save Grogu, mm-hmm. and <laughs> uh, just like. I don't know. I just thought that whatever concept, art, like there was like a freeze frame concept art image of Plo Koon uh, destroying all the death troopers or whatever, whatever they're called. Um, and I thought that was really fun. So yeah. Did you, you, you said you weren't able to watch it, right? No, I did not watch it yet. I did uh, read into some of the interviews and stuff though. Uh, the Plo Koon reveal though, like you said, we knew of beforehand, but seeing the concept art, seeing the mask like on set, uh, yeah was so cool and like plo Koon, we were just talking about him right but he's like my favorite ancillary kind of substantive character because of clone wars prequel era person so yeah the idea that like if they really wanted to they could have brought him back or they just did it as like a stand-in stings a little bit but does give me a little bit of hope to just like think of hey you know what maybe there's a future for plo Koon, you know I mean, if there's one thing that we've learned from Star Wars is that, you know, those who we think are dead probably are dead. Yes. Uh, and we saw Plo Koon, his unfortunate alleged death in episode three, but I'm not convinced. He's coming back. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dave Filoni, I have a feeling maybe he's going to sneak him in there somehow. Would you be okay with that? Would you be okay if, like, Plo Koon sort of just, like, showed up as, like, a maybe like a subplot in like one of these like upcoming live action movies or or TV shows or something like that. That, I feel like that'd be fun. I would be more than okay with it because I think (laughs) obviously Plo Koon is awesome, right? He has a cool tie to Ahsoka and like, I don't know much about his Canon resume outside of what I've seen in Clone Wars, but he always did seem like he was, like, one of the good Jedi, right? Like, he was sort of in that Obi-Wan field of, like, I am very committed to this order, but the way he ha- has views about the clones, the way that he cared for Ahsoka, like, I think you could take him out of that more dogmatic prequel Jedi, and maybe, you know, we get to a point where the new Jedi order that Luke builds consists of Luke Skywalker, Plo Koon, Ahsoka Tano, and then they train everybody or something, you know? That could be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. I just think at some point it would be interesting for Star Wars to sort of, like, try to explore that path of, like, you know, a Jedi that we thought was dead but actually survived Order 66, like, coming back to, like, either help out or, like, you know, he's, like, a mystery figure that's in the beginning and then, I don't know, something like that. I, I always thought that that would be cool. Um, Plo Koon definitely is one of the ones that got the most fleshed out like during the clone wars like you said uh so i think it'd be awesome to see him come back um but i would say i would prefer if mace windu came back over plo Koon, but mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah regardless i'm with you i do think it would be interesting uh i think it would be something that would piss off some people in the fandom but we i think we've reached a point where we we crossed that bridge i think years ago at this point where it's like oh so luke skywalker wasn't the only jedi left it was like well yeah like <laughs> he wasn't yeah it's, you know? 
yeah <laughs> you gotta just you gotta just like suspend disbelief at some point and just like accept that yeah yeah and i feel like it's very easy to rationalize of like some people just didn't care about fighting the rebellion some people were more concerned about surviving you know ahsoka left the jedi before they fell cal Kestis ran you know he wasn't finished his tra- with his training he was barely a padawan when that all went down and then yeah like kanan kanan has his arc he dies but like he has his arc you know of like the reasoning of why he totally. wasn't doing the whole i want to save the rebellion like luke skywalker right like there is i think justification and i think bringing in a few more wouldn't hurt again the people that are pissed probably have been pissed for years already but i don't think you'd be losing anything yeah no i mean it's like one of those things that like you could just you could say that about obi-wan too right Mm -hmm. like any of these jedi you could be like oh like you know obi-wan is just like hanging out on tatooine like why didn't he fight the empire why didn't he join like the the budding rebellion that he definitely knew about you know so like yeah, you can make that argument about everybody. It doesn't change the fact. It doesn't change the original trilogy is basically what I'm saying. Right. Um, and it would be cool to see more Jedi actually come in and like flesh that out. Yeah. Go I... into the go into more about the go into more about the reasons why they didn't uh, like make a their make their presence like more known mm-hmm. during the Galactic Civil War. So. Yeah. And I do think it would be very interesting to see the Jedi of the old world have to work with luke skywalker of like this new class and mindset of what the future of this order should be like that's some interesting drama and conflict there between characters on what they think the jedi should be right because you and i talked about this forever where we're very excited to see an eventual meeting of ahsoka and luke because ahsoka can give the perspective of what anakin viewed the order like that could influence luke and in my headcanon, the reason Luke believes the things he believes about Sidious and the Order in The Last Jedi is because he met Ahsoka, and she told him about how everything happened, and the flaws, and what led to the downfall, right? So, like, you would imagine they would probably have a similar way of thinking about what this Order should be if you bring in someone like Plo Koon or Mace Windu. Maybe they have differing opinions, as we saw Obi-Wan was not approving of everything that Luke did in the original trilogy, right? So I do think that adds some interesting yeah. layers of, like, human conflict in Star Wars, which I think is always when it's at its best, so. I think you're definitely right. Yeah, you, you, you sort of, like, look at where Luke was at the end of Return of the Jedi, and he may have had this, like, idealized version of, like, what being a Jedi is, and knowing that we don't know but we can, we can assume that at some point he meets ahsoka and he is sort of his eyes are open to that other way of thinking about like jedi and every, about the jedi and perhaps like you said maybe he meets plo Koon and he gets like a third opinion on it right and he starts to develop like this very nuanced view that sort of leads him to where he is in the last jedi i think that makes a lot of sense i want to see that uh <laughs> let's get it going mm-hmm. dave filoni we know that you love plo Koon. So let's let's put him in a new project or something. Let's just make a Plo Koon miniseries. Yeah, dude. Honestly. For sure. <laughs> uh, another thing we learned from this documentary that people have been... <laughs> the fandom menace had a field day with this one, Mike. Um, Filoni yeah. said a fact that Ahsoka has had mm-hmm. more training and is more skilled than Luke Skywalker... And then suddenly everybody who's like, I don't hate women in Star Wars, I love Ahsoka, is like, hold on, <laughs> you're telling me <laughs> she could be better than Luke in some things? Like, uh, do you have a take on the reaction to this? Uh, well, I think that my take on the, rea- on the reaction to this is mm-hmm. my take on most reactions the fandom menace has, which mm-hmm. is get over yourselves, yeah. you know? Uh, honestly, like, it's not... And any any fan of Star Wars who's like worth their salt will tell you that like, you know, anybody any Jedi trained by the Jedi Order like before its fall, are likely more powerful than Luke like at any point in the original trilogy. Mm-hmm. Like, let's just like remember the fact that like he had like a few months of training on Dagobah with Yoda. Maybe that's like given it some. That's that's like a that's a 
optimistic yeah uh sort of like guess but like you know you think about ahsoka she was she was trained from like you know five years six years old or whatever to when she was like probably like 17 or 18 years old so of course she's more skilled yeah and like there's a thing to say about luke could still have more untapped raw power because of his bloodline the way that ray does right of like hey yeah Yeah. that legacy is just like this latent power in there which when unlocked no contest but there's a certain aspect of the jedi about control and um like guidance over who you are and what you can do that is refinement and comes with practice and skill so yeah i thought we all knew this that ahsoka had more skill and practice than luke <laughs> you know yeah. the kid who started when he was 19 and like you said she started when she was like four she's got like 20 years on him yeah no i think that's a good differentiation to make like there's like skill is not equal to like someone's inherent like raw power right so like like Luke at the end of the Last Jedi, probably like maybe isn't even as skilled as Ahsoka. Like at the end of the Clone Wars, but you can see that like he has more like raw innate Force power than mm-hmm. she ever will. You know, and that's that's just like 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 you said. Like I thought we knew this already. You know, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, it's almost as if like that entire argument of raw power versus skill is the explanation people forget about when we look at the end of the episode seven you know like just oh yeah some training versus the lineage of a palpatine who yeah maybe that maybe that equals out who knows yeah yeah i mean i guess so but you also have to right, right. You, you also have to remember that <laughs> kylo ren is a descendant of anakin so, right uh i don't know mm-hmm uh anyway we're not gonna get into that (laughs) that that was that was a big takeaway that people had from the presentation for some reason but the last thing i want to bring up from the uh, disney gallery is that mark hamill had comments about returning to luke and why he decided it was a good opportunity for him and the story and everything basically he said that he was sold on returning because of the MCU and what they've been able to do uh, tech wise with like de aging and the process that that goes along with to service the story and the actors who are able to represent a character at a different point in their life. And he was very impressed with what he saw from them and the promise of what was pitched to him for the Mandalorian. So that was a perfect storm of getting him on board. I will ask you this, Mike. I don't think you were able to see the actual context of this, but do you think that these comments will skew or indicate one way or another if mark hamill will continue to be doing stuff like this for luke or going back to that recasting conversation we have of like if we have serious plans should we recast or should we keep doing this i don't know like like you said i'm not really too familiar with like the exact context that mark hamill said that in but i mean i from what i can gather and like obviously like i I don't have a i don't have a window into mark hamill's mind or anything but like it's obvious that he really loves the character it's obvious that he really loves star wars it's obviously that he cares a lot about it and he cares a lot about the fandom and I think that a lot of those things will make him want to reprise the role. I don't know if it's really a question of whether he would be down to do it, or whether it be, or whether it's a question of like, if, is Dis- is that the route that like Disney wants to take? Because it's hard to sort of like really, if they're gonna if they're gonna include Mark Hamill, if they're gonna well if they're gonna include Luke Skywalker in future Star Wars TV shows, or what have you, or really, yeah, in any Star Wars TV show or movie or anything, like it's got to work right so like i'm not sure how if you could if you could sort of like anchor like a show or like an arc of a show it doesn't even have to be about him on like this like de-aged character i don't know just to me i don't think i would want to see that i would want to see like a different take on the character from a different actor and i think that that may be what disney would want to do too but the technology is is there so i can also see them going the other way um whether but to your question of like whether mark hamill would be down to do it i think that's a given i think he would definitely do it um but 
I don't know if that's like necessarily what Disney would want to do. I don't think that that's what I would want. What about you? I'm in a similar boat. I think if we go animated, like again, we talked about that idea, like six to seven animated series, like the Clone Wars. Um, but for this trio of the original trilogy, if it was that, sure, have Mark Hamill back as Luke doing the voice because he's a voice actor. Um, yeah. But if it is this like live action Disney Plus continuum of all these shows and potentially a movie down the line like yeah i'm kind of with you like if there are big plans for luke skywalker i do hope he is just recast because i love mark hamill he is luke skywalker but star wars has been pretty spot on for casting young versions of iconic characters and actor pairs you know like with the exception of and i i I blame this more on like the script than the actor but with the exception of donald glover lando i genuinely think everybody who has been cast as a young version of a character we already knew or a second actor coming into this role has done a pretty killer job like alden ehrenreich we both really love as han solo ewan mcgregor everybody loves um rosario dawson did a very good job go ahead I personally really like Donald Glover. Um, yeah, and I think good job. I know I, you were, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he's great, and I think with another stab at it, with a better script, he'd be able to feel more natural there for sure. Like I think he's a great Definitely. choice. He just wasn't given the best material. I think. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Um, so yeah, yeah I, do that for Luke. Do that for Luke for sure. I mean, I have to agree with you. Like, if they were to do like a animated tv show or something it wouldn't make sense to recast luke because you know the voice doesn't really change uh they can they can edit that in post and like make it sound like make him sound younger and everything right um interestingly enough i think i did see something from this and i might be completely wrong but i think that they said that the vocals and like the audio and the dial the dialogue that luke had in the season finale of the mandalorian was like AI'd and like cut from like other like like him I don't know like like it was like some algorithm I guess that like took his voice from like other examples and like kind of like meshed together like this like what he said in this so it was it sounded like Luke from the original trilogy I'm pretty sure I heard that somewhere I might be making that up but I'm pretty sure that they only had Mark Hamill there for like the face and everything or like that, the, the way that like he was mm-hmm. um, and his like state presence and everything. So you could definitely have Mark Hamill like do the voice for something. But um, I guess my question to you, Christian, is like, do you think that that would be the route that Disney goes in regards to like casting another live action Luke? Do you think that Disney would want to do that or do you think they'd want to milk Mark Hamill as long as they can Uh, And do you think that they're confident enough in, like, their technology that they could do that? I will base this off of their track record so far with animating and bringing back characters whose actors have passed away with, like, uh, Peter Cushing and Carrie Fisher. If there's anyone else I'm forgetting, add them to the list. Like, yeah, I don't know. Because, like, if they were to go this route that they've gone with mando for luke for the foreseeable future and then god forbid mark hamill passes away like do they keep doing that with the ai voice and his likeness is that less weird because they were already doing it before he passed away like carrie fisher they didn't really do anything with before she passed away like because rogue one with the de-aged carrie fisher released i believe after she passed away so like what is the the wiggle room for like ethics on that level i don't know um so genuinely from just like looking at how movie making works and i don't think any character is sacred of only this one person can play them i think it's possible to have a good interpretation yeah i think they should just recast i think disney looking at long term it would make sense for them to have a secondary character actor to play Luke Skywalker, I think. Because, who like, 10 years from now, what if they're like, hey, the untold story, the three-episode series of between six and seven about young Luke Han Leia, 
after Return of the Jedi, before The Force Awakens, we're making a movie, but what are you going to do? You can, are you going to de-age the entire cast? Maybe it becomes more affordable in time, and maybe you can just do it all AI, but then you get into Uncanny Valley and all these things. Like, just... It's way easier for everybody if you just rip the band-aid off and you just give us moving forward, Luke pre age fifty is this actor and deal with it. I think that's yeah. the best way to do it. I just don't think yeah, I just don't think at this point in time where the technology is, like I don't think a character like de aged like that with like a synthesized AI voice, like I just don't think you would be able to that character would be able to like carry something you know like yeah it just would seem weird it would just seem really weird like it'd be like a video you would game. want you would route yeah it'd be like a video game you would be like this doesn't seem right you know like it may look really good and everything but like you would there'd be something off about it so i feel like it'd just be better to, to recast so i'm totally with you there mm -hmm. so we'll see if anything comes out of that in the future uh, I'm very curious to see if Mando Season 3 features Luke Skywalker again, because it seems like with that hire they yeah. brought on uh, from the community a couple weeks ago, like, seems like they are committed to de-aging on some level in the future, so maybe we do get oh, for another sure another scene or two. But. Maybe we will. We'll see. Um, speaking of characters returning to actors, we have a potential spoilery leak to discuss. We'll probably only spend like five minutes on this at most, but um, if you're very yeah. sensitive to spoilers for Kenobi, um, not necessarily who's Mute in it. Or yeah, not like who's in it, but like maybe the capacity somebody will be in this. Uh, mute or uh, I'll, I'll give a hand signal when we're done, or you can just skip ahead five minutes and we'll be good. Yeah, if you yeah, just if you're if you're at all squeamish about it, I would just not listen to this sure. and skip ahead. So, Grain of Salt, not sure if this is official, but, you know, potentially a leak. There has been some concept art that has leaked detailing Darth Vader, the, the humanoid remains of Darth Vader under the suit, in some sort of, like, like chassis, I guess, like some holding, resting shelf, like, when you have... <laughs> in fallout where you have the power armor resting on like the uh yeah, the, like, <laughs> yeah that's exactly it. the scaffolding um it's that but it is like hayden christensen burned up healed <laughs> vader pale with a a breathing mask on also showing a back to tank and a couple other things it, alluding to the idea that we've all been assuming that we will see vader outside of the suit in kenobi because they got hayden christensen back yeah i mean um if you look really closely at the concept art it looks pretty clear that like the the art was sort of like made with hayden christensen's likeness in mind you can kind of tell from the face and the way that the head is shaped um and like yeah i i don't think it's that much of a surprise to be honest like this is not the first time if you think about it that we'd have seen darth vader's like humanoid body like in some sort of like, like in this way because like we kind of got a tease of that in rogue one if you can remember mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean like we knew we knew hayden christensen's coming back we know darth vader's coming back i think it would just make sense my mind sort of like had already sort of prepared for the possibility and to some extent inevitability of seeing like Darth Vader sort of like deconstructed like this because I think that when you're doing something like this when you're sort of going into the mind of Obi-Wan Kenobi you're gonna also want to sort of like try to deconstruct Vader as like who he is and like what he means to Obi-Wan and like who he was before and this is like a, having him in the back to tank all pale with with his suit not on and he looks all messed up like is a really good way of sort of like showing visually to the audience like how messed up anakin has become yeah and i i think like you're saying we've all kind of prepared for this uh, i wonder if this will translate to you know that rematch of the century rematch of the century i would uh, assume similar to like the ahsoka fight the helmet will either come off or become cracked and then you will get that acting of hayden christensen and ewan mcgregor on set like eye to eye take my mask off son you know like the, an, an actual yeah. <laughs> encounter like that so just cool yeah 
It is very cool. Um, obviously, take it with a grain of salt, but it is. It seems like that'd be likely that we'd see this. So, mm-hmm. so uh, again, potentially not true, but interesting nonetheless, and confirming theories. So we'll see what becomes of it. Anyway, that's the hand signal. That's the end. That's the end of the spoilers. Stop. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're good. <laughs> More immediately than that Disney Plus show. The Book of Boba Fett will be kicking off in December. Now, recently, Robert Rodriguez, who is the executive producer of The Book of Boba Fett, was interviewed because he was doing uh, a press circuit for the Disney Plus Billie Eilish special. I believe he directed it. Um, He was being interviewed, and somebody from Collider was asking him about Book of Boba Fett, of course, as you would, because if somebody's working on Star Wars, they will get that question a million times. <laughs> yeah. Um, regarding the Book of Boba Fett, Robert Rodriguez had to say, quote, I can't say anything about it at all right now, but it's coming out in December. Wait until you see what's coming. It's going to blow your mind. That's all I can say. I can talk it up all I want because I know it over delivers. It way over delivers. People are going <laughs> to be so pumped when they see it. End quote. Mike, what do you think of that? Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, I'm already pumped, and I haven't even seen it yet. Uh, so if he's saying there, I'm gonna be pumped when I see it. Um, I'm I'm totally I'm totally expecting this this show to be a banger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you agree with me, Christian. <laughs> oh, I absolutely am. I I think it will be. I think it will probably have a bit more like winky cute stuff than Mandalorian does. Um. Because, you know, with the introduction or the setup for the book of Boba Fett at the end of season two, like the whole thing with Bib Fortuna and then being in Jabba's castle, all that stuff, I think, lends itself to being kind of cutesy with the legacy of Boba Fett and references. Um, Definitely. Yeah. And I think when you're talking about a character like Boba Fett from this perspective, from the producer talking about the scale and scope of it that's kind of what you have to go off of right like it's going to be maybe glorified fan fiction but becoming canon right it's like oh the cool boba fett you always wanted to see we're doing it he's gonna hunt down this character you're familiar with you know like as desperately as i've i will never stop talking about it as i want to see boba fett's first mission hunting down mace windu right that is so fan fictiony But it would still be hype as hell. And if that's the type of atmosphere they want to hit with this show, I think that's what we have to prepare for. Definitely. I think it's going to be like just a nonstop action thrill ride of just like Boba Fett doing like Boba Fett shit. Yeah. Like stuff that you would expect, stuff that you would expect like Boba Fett to be doing, just like kicking ass, taking names. Like, you know how it is. Uh, he's he obviously like, I, 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 have, I have a feeling. Um, that we're going to sort of get into like how Boba Fett like thinks about the galaxy, especially like post empire and everything. Um, I think it would just be like a missed opportunity if we didn't think a little bit deeper about the character and sort of like explore the nuances to like how he works, because we started to get that a little bit in the Mandalorian. Um, but I'd say, yeah, for the most part, it's just going to be like, you know, Boba Fett, like doing Boba Fett stuff. And I'm really here for it. Mm um with robert rodriguez saying that it over delivers like i'm sure that it's going to sort of like talk about all of these things and and really give like a good a good a good telling of some boba fett stories stuff that we have been hoping for and we've been wanting to see since we were since we were kids uh, because everybody thought boba fett was cool when they were a kid um, it's just with age we became more jaded until the Yeah, <laughs> I, I think you're right, and I definitely think over delivering, specifically with the context we have, to me screams like, "Hey, fan service!" You know, which I'm sure some people won't like. Uh, that was some people's issue with Solo, but honestly, I feel like Solo's cutesy stuff wasn't even that bad. Um, yeah, definitely. Not. Like, like they give answers we didn't need right but i don't think boba fett needs to do that like how many questions do we have about boba fett that would be answered even like oh how did he actually get out of the pit that's it you know that's it yeah. so 
I think it lends itself more to the idea of like celebrating this character's role in Star Wars, maybe for the over delivering thing. Like you said, like Boba Fett doing Boba Fett shit the way we've always envisioned him doing it. Um, I also think this show has a ripe potential for cameos. I think this show could be Cameo City. Like, more than Bad like, Batch, even. <laughs> okay, so Cameo, cameo is, like, from the Star Wars universe, or just, like, random, oh, <laughs> like no, no, random no. people from from real life? Star Wars like, universe, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, like I think about The Mandalorian, it's like, well, like, how did Bill Burr get in there, right? To me, like, that's right, like, yeah, a weird yeah. cameo. But, like, <laughs> uh, I'm sure we'll get something like that in the Book of Boba Fett, right? But, like... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know how necessarily how this show is going to be sort of like, like how it's going to be presented. Like when I think of the Book of Boba Fett, and this is something we've talked about on the podcast. When I think of that, I think of it maybe as like him sort of like maybe retelling earlier stories of his like his like you know his triumphs across the galaxy as a bounty hunter and all that kind of stuff. And he's mm-hmm. telling that from the perspective of where he is at the end of the Mandalorian season two. I don't know. But I think it would be cool to sort of like, if that were the case, like you said, it would be very easy to sort of get like these cameos from Star Wars, like from across, from across, you know, you know, honestly, post like Attack of the Clones or whenever he first dons the helmet. Um, So, yeah, that that sounds like definitely, definitely something that I would expect from something like this. Will we see a sequence where he's taking a bounty like uh, 15 years before uh, the events of Return of the Jedi and he's walking out of a bar and he bumps into some guy and it's Alden Ehrenreich Han Solo and he's like, hey, take it easy. Don't freeze me, buddy. You know, like... <laughs> like we get yeah, that. legit. Yeah, that'd be... Or, yeah, or I don't know, like, like he goes he goes and, like, meets with Jabba or something like that, mm-hmm. like, pre a, new, pre a New Hope, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. And, like, like Alden Ehrenreich is like, there <laughs> no honestly i i think cool. that is the level of what robert rodriguez is alluding to when he says it over delivers i think that's probably what he means of like yeah job is here you'll see han solo you'll see dengar and bosk and yep. uh sly snoodles <laughs> and all that's like they're all gonna be there in the background like i i think it will be along those lines because we like you said we really have no idea what to go off of i'm with you i think this is probably an anthology about his life more than what is he doing after he sits down on that throne right like yeah I, i'm expecting it to be exploring his legacy so we'll wait and see but over delivering probably a good thing to say before the marketing kicks up you know <laughs> yeah totally uh, speaking of which um i guess since we're on the topic and i don't see it on the dock uh are we it's it's, it's september now basically it's August 31st, but it's basically September. Are we going to see any marketing for this anytime soon? Rod- Robert Rodriguez said it's coming out in December, so I take his word for it. But mm-hmm. like, we have seen nothing. Not a thing. Yeah. I mean, we got Star Wars Visions coming up, and I think that's probably going to get some of the focus for the marketing. Um, I don't know. Especially we... since there is, there is a Boba Fett. Mm-hmm star wars visions so true we also have uh disney plus a day sometime in november like early november right so right i don't know i feel like your featured content there on the star wars front would probably be your show that's about to kick off a month later um but yeah Yeah, i I think we'll probably see like a poster maybe like an updated logo or key art for the show maybe this month and then teaser sometime in october i don't know what are you thinking i mean i think it will start to hear something in september whether that be like i don't know some magazine does a cover story we get photos right uh but i think yeah by you know by mid-october if we don't have a, like a trailer i'd be like what the hell mm-hmm. yeah or a teaser at least mm-hmm. I don't know. yeah I, th- I think it could be a weird anomaly where like mando season two didn't get much advertisement ahead of time right like you got some but it was like very very minimal and boba fett's a bigger name it's tied to the mando universe and if you do have that basically 
huge presentation lined up for early November, I feel like that'd be a great pillar of that presentation, right? Like show a trailer, maybe release the first episode early. I, I, like, I think there could be some interesting stuff. Definitely. Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. And uh, we'll let people know, as always, right here. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of waiting and seeing, we got some Lego Star Wars news to bring up. Um, we will get to the main game in a second, because we're going to have to wait for that one. But presumably before Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga releases, we will be able to try out Lego Star Wars Battles. It is an Apple Arcade exclusive action strategy game that is PvP, player versus player, and it is a basically action-based real-time strategy Lego Star Wars game. So, hey, cool. I honestly didn't even know about this until right now. Really, so this is breaking news to me. Uh, yeah, I didn't see this. Mike, if you want to look it up so you can get a, a good look at what the game looks like, I'd be curious to hear your take on it because. It is, they do say it is real-time action, but you are strategically maneuvering a battlefield. You're building towers and stuff um, to defend, uh, towers to attack on your player or your enemy player, and um, sort of domination-esque control, control points, right, uh, on the battlefield. So... They're really going in on this as it being a Lego Star Wars celebration. I think it's multiple eras across all of Star Wars. There are different heroes that have different abilities depending on who they are in the world. Jedi, Sith, what have you. And yeah, it, it seems pretty fleshed out for a game hitting Apple Arcade. I haven't messed with Apple Arcade much. I know friend of the show, Joe Clicks Gamescast co-host kevin diaz has an apple arcade sub and he's messed with a few games on that service that he really likes so more fleshed out than a mobile game typically is but interesting project for lego star wars i think yeah definitely it, it looks like uh kind of like halo wars sort of that's, sure, that's yeah. what i'm like mm -hmm. thinking about um yeah this this seems like a, this seems like a lot of fun i'm honestly not really sure about how apple arcade works uh do you, are you familiar with that like do you need to have a specific um like subscription to play this game or like could i as a non-apple arcade subscriber like buy it off the app store so you know i'm pretty sure the way it shakes out is apple arcade is a five dollar a month subscription you can have on apple tv and ios devices um okay and I think you can buy the games on the service, but they are just like, it's more expensive than if you just paid for a month of the service, you know, um, kind of, kind of like game pass where like, yeah, I'm paying 15 bucks a month or I can spend 60 bucks for Halo when it comes out. It's like that, but on a more mobile scale. So I don't know what the full price of this is going to be from the star Wars.com write up. There's no confirmed date yet, but I do imagine you'd be able to play this by buying it or by dropping a sub for a month and checking it out so I'm, I'm reading a polygon article right now interestingly it says that it was shut down in july because it's soft launch in a few countries in 2019 and they like they like shut it down in july but then developer tt games like relaunched it basically hmm so I guess this had already existed. I just didn't know about it. Yeah, I had never heard. But of maybe it. not. Maybe not in America. I don't know. Confusing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I will say as well, it's Apple the Arcade, the Phantom Lego Star Wars game. <laughs> yes. Um, and when it comes to Apple Arcade games, though, there have been a handful that have released on other consoles and stuff after the fact. Like it's normally a couple months of it's an Apple Arcade game, and then it will hit somewhere else. So, like, Apple Arcade games in the past have come to Switch, uh, PS4, Xbox. So, if you're curious about this, if you like strategy games, if you like Lego Star Wars, if it sounds appealing and you don't want to do the Apple stuff, probably just wait a few months and you'll probably get your hands on it. Interesting. Yeah, I guess I guess the same developer that, that, that closed it down is the same one that relaunched it just, like, a month later. So, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, so we'll have to see about that. Um, I'm definitely down to try it and hopefully like this will come to switch or something um, which will probably make it a lot easier to play uh, on a bigger screen like you said so for sure 
Uh, well, a game that is coming to Switch and will be a bit longer of a wait is Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Mike, uh-huh. you and I discussed yeah. this appearing at Gamescom previously. Mm-hmm. I think we discussed the opportunity and option of potentially seeing another delay. Did we? I think we did. We, we, we discussed the possibility, yeah. Well, we got a new look, we got some gameplay, we got a new trailer, and it has been delayed again. It is now coming, yeah. I believe spring 2022 is the only window they've given. So, not uh, this year. Yeah. Yeah. So, now, I think, you know, people, you know Christian, you, you know that I am very excited for this game. It was probably like one of the games that I was most excited for this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was also one of the games that was I was most excited for last year too, uh, when it was delayed in 2020. So, like I don't know, just just to me, like I understand and like I get that they don't feel ready to put the game out, right? And I get it. Like I'm not trying to be part of the fandom menace, as we, you know, like to deride those those types of people but like to me it's like you're gonna you're gonna delay a game that was originally supposed to come out in like october 2020 right and you delay it to like sometime in 2021 and at the end of 2021 you're like actually it's gonna come out in 2022 it makes me wonder like can i even believe them when they say that it's gonna come out in spring 2022 and i'm not trying to be like that guy, it's just like they don't really have that great of a track record when it comes to like telling us when their games are going to come out. Yeah. Because yeah. if they if, if they knew it was going to take this this long, well, maybe they didn't know it was going to take this long because of the pandemic and everything. But like, if they knew that like what they were doing was ambitious, they shouldn't have like come out with like release dates for it. Like they should have been they should have like waited. You know, I don't know. I, I'm sure there's a lot more to it, and I'm sure I'm just ar- armchairing here. But like, it just seems silly to me that they would sort of like just keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it and pushing it and it's like at some point it's like i don't even know if i can believe you anymore the boy who cried wolf sure 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 yeah because like the pandemic has hit a bunch of different studios very differently right like um yeah it, it really depends on the project like warner brothers who owns tt has also delayed a bunch of other games that they have in their lineup like gotham knights the new batman game and then hogwarts legacy the harry potter game both those got pushed out of this year um and with lego star wars a game that was supposed to drop in 2020 got pushed to 2021 um was that the pandemic was that other things because it's so ambitious i don't know was it i think at this point though if there wasn't a pandemic it still probably would have gotten delayed to this year out of 2020 right just because yeah Again, I don't know what it was actually like for them dealing with the pandemic, but the pandemic started in March 2020, at least with the shutdowns in the U.S., right? Like, so there's been some time to get a scope, and unless the management has just not really adapted well, which it may was have, have well like not, then I think there was probably more issues with the game before the pandemic hit in terms of just hitting that october 2020 date because it is so ambitious right so like i think it's a unfortunate combination of well maybe it's not so unfortunate because it is them trying new things with a lego game and really pushing the boundaries of that formula but that will create issues and the pandemic just makes everything worse so i think that's the situation we're in right now which is a bummer for the people excited for it but at the end of it all silver lining this is probably going to be a really cool lego game compared to all the other lego games you know definitely definitely i and i'm not saying that like they don't have like i don't want them to rush it like right. i don't, I want to be clear like i want to I, I don't want them to rush it like i want them to take the time that they need i guess what just irks me is that they are just not like they just don't care about like making predictions even if like they're not 
willing like they're, they're, they're likely not going to come true i guess like they obviously you know the powers that be probably want this game out by a certain time so they can recoup the money that they spent on it and all that kind of stuff and so it's probably a lot more complicated than what we're making it out to be but to me it's like they ha they could have had a really easy out in 2020 if they just said hey guys like like with the pandemic and the fact that this game is like really ambitious like we're not quite done with it yet and we're not really sure when that's going to be right instead of just like dragging this all along and being like oh 2021 oh wait no no 2022 and like what's next like oh no wait, no sorry not 2022 2023 right like it's like why couldn't they just have used that as an excuse to just be like listen we were a little bit ambitious we gotta take some more time and not keep dragging us along i guess that's what makes me upset sure but, uh like you said it's gonna be a pretty kick-ass star wars game regardless and so i'm excited for it but um that's just that's just my gripe with it sure well now that the bad news is out of the way let's talk about what the trailer actually showed because again it looks ambitious the the time they need is apparent i think based off of the scope of this game they're showing um a few highlights we knew this but it's gonna have a revamped combat system compared to all the lego games of the past which really are just you know you're zoomed out you got like square or x is your attack button and then that's it <laughs> like that is it if you have a force ability it's <laughs> yeah. like maybe a different button uh if you have a ranged attack <laughs> it's the same button you hit as on like attack like lego game combat has never been complex by yeah. any stretch um but what we have here is like genuine uncharted gears of war style cover combat so princess leia on the tantive four right like shoulder to the wall pistol out peek around with her blaster and then bang 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 get some stormtroopers like there's there's some dare i say strategy and layers to this combat it looks like yeah definitely um the trailer looks amazing the game looks great um with all those negative things that I said before, and I don't mean to be too negative, uh, the, the game does look amazing. Um, what, if you think about the old Lego Star Wars games, you're you're definitely right. Like, there's zero strategy involved with that. You kind of just walk up, you you mash X, you hope you don't die, right? But it doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> you can easily just come back. Um, this does seem like you said has like you know, a bit more sort of like a tactical sort of feel to it um and i think that's good i don't think it should be too challenging because at the end of the day you know it's like a game for kids mm -hmm. um but like you know introducing a little bit more of a challenge to like what the previous star wars games are is good because um it is pretty easy to sort of just like blow through that and i'm sure that this is going to give it a bit more of a, a bit more depth uh and a better feel to it for sure so i'm, I'm really liking the way it looks uh it just looks like if like lego star wars the complete saga was remastered and like completely redone and it looks great yeah and i'll even say this too of like when it comes to challenge because you're right i think they have to remember and i feel like most lego games even the more modern ones that i've messed with um do this well it's like they're very accessible because they're for children to be able to have fun with these games and there's there's reasons for everybody to enjoy the games but like even with what they've shown i don't even think it necessarily needs to be challenging like maybe they could add a mode that's like hey you have two hearts instead of four right like yeah if you want more of that pushback but from what they're showing i don't even need the game to be challenging because it just looks like the combat and the way you engage with the world is just more engaging like that's just straight up a fact right like there's cover yeah. for pistols and blasters. Uh, lightsaber combat, we can get into, continues to look very neat and cool. Like, it seems like for the duels, you're locked into this sort of cinematic, like, 3D arena fighter Tekken-style camera that's, like, just tracking the two people in the duel. And you have, like, your melee attacks. Like, it looks really, really cool. 
yeah it kind of reminds me of like the duels and like ghost of Tsushima, sort of yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh that's that's the that's the feel that i get uh but yeah i think i think you're definitely right like i i think you're not supposed it's not supposed to be like so freaking challenging it's not supposed to be like impossible like dark souls level like you can't get through it right yeah, like, it's a game for kids if you want that play fallen order right <laughs> yeah definitely uh but like i mean i you know there 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 is like there is something to be said about like adding more layers to the gameplay uh i think like as you alluded to earlier christian and like making it a little bit more strategic making it a little bit more tactical making the player just like think a little bit more about like the decisions that they're making not necessarily saying that that makes that the game is like super hard or anything like that but just like a little bit more engaging and i think you're right that definitely sort of extends past like combat and when you're like when the camera is that close to your character and like you're interacting with the environment you sort of feel like you're in there um and that's not something that you kind of got with the old lego star wars games like you like you said it was more bird's eye view sort of just like hack and slash and just like walk through without any without any challenge which is you know fine in its own right mm -hmm. uh it's cool that they're sort of building building on that though so yeah definitely and for me the thing that sticks out the most is as a kid for sure even now kind of less so because i've sort of burnt out on the idea of this when it's not done meaningfully but i love open world stuff you know like yeah. it's definitely easy like for some instances when a game's like we're open world i kind of roll my eyes now i'm like oh my god no i don't need this definitely but definitely what the skywalker saga is doing which i think is interesting is it has a map in the trailer right which is reminiscent of the map in episode seven that shows like a star chart of the galaxy and you have all the planets that are relevant to probably all the story stuff maybe there's some extra bonus ones in there um that you can pull up the map you can pick one of the planets hop through a, a hyperspace tunnel you get shot out and then you're in your ship and then you can be like flying on the outside in space seeing that planet approaching the planet finding a place to land on the planet and then landing on the planet like that is a Star Wars fantasy that no other game has been able to do yet, you know? So that is also very cool and is something that I think will probably be very hard to do and will warrant the time needed because, again, it's new. It's something all of us have dreamt about doing. And it's probably doable because this is a Lego-style game where... It doesn't need to be hyper realistic. It doesn't have to be all these things. They can't just focus on the technical aspect of how can we make it so a player can come out of hyperspace, see a planet, fly to the planet, land on the planet, do their Star Wars adventure, which makes me excited. Totally, totally. I, I do think that that is like a very cool aspect of the game. Mm -hmm. um, and like you said, I think it's nice when developers like actually try to take the open world concept and like not just have it as a gimmick and actually use it as like a way to tell a story and i think that from so so far what we looked at from this game that's what they're trying to do and mm -hmm. i'm excited for it for sure i'm really really hyped to play this um a lot of my a lot of my frustration just like comes from a place of like being really excited about it so uh you know they got to take more time there's not really much we can do about it, so uh, it's probably for a good reason. Yeah. So, were there any other highlights for you with this uh, new updated trailer? We got to see some looks at, like, the different eras, uh, some Lego humor and jokes that we all love from the originals. Look like they're continuing here. Anything else stand out to you? You know, I just thought it was really cool to see some of these, uh, like, some of the newer uh star wars movies get this sort of treatment like we didn't get to see the last jedi or the rise of skywalker like in this style basically um and so it was kind of cool to just like watch that and like see some of that um so yeah i guess that's one of the takeaways for me i also just think the game just looks really beautiful from what they've showed us um and i'm excited to like actually see some like a gameplay some great gameplay footage at some point about this so yeah 
I, I think Lego games typically put out demos as well, so I think it's likely that this game will probably get a demo before it comes out. Oh, hell yeah. Me playing that, that's for sure. Absolutely. But yeah, I thought it looked great. It was very cool. It was one of the highlights of Gamescom for sure. And when it comes to upcoming releases, you know, we, we still got stuff for the fall. We got um, some shows to keep us occupied. Star Wars Hunter has, Hunters has been delayed. Lego Skywalker Saga has been delayed. But hopefully in the meantime, we'll be satisfied with some, some more gameplay clips. I bet you Game Informer gets it as a cover story for one month before launch, just to get like a full blowout. Um, but yeah, I, I bet we'll be seeing more of this than we have lately in the coming months, I imagine. Hopefully. Yeah. Fingers are crossed. For sure. Well, Mike, I think that's going to do it for this week's Jedi Knights. There is not much else going on. I saw a fun news thing that Elijah Wood was like, hey, I'd rather be in a Star Wars movie over a Marvel movie, but I would like to do both. <laughs> so, <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's fine. I yeah. like Elijah Wood. Yeah, he's cool. <laughs> um so maybe uh, trying to think of trying to think of trying to think of how i want to see him i guess maybe um i don't know like a, I, don't, I would say bounty hunter but not really <laughs> i i want to see him play a villain i think that'd be fun yeah i think he could definitely do that he has like yeah he's got like a very like strange quality to him that would be a bit creepy for a villain yeah i i think him being some like really cool uh menacing imperial um in some old republic new republic whatever uh could be interesting so yeah yeah well hopefully next week is a bit more news for us to digest and chew on maybe we get some boba fett teasers like you're saying mike we're kicking off september um hopefully man mando's supposed to start shooting this month as well so maybe we'll get some set photos or anything or some announcements I'll be, I'll be, I'll keep my eyes peeled for some of these set leaks. Mm -hmm. Always. Hell yeah. Uh, well, until then, Mike, where can everybody find you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Mike P. Connors. Very nice. You can follow me on Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok at ChantyD2, as well as here, youtube.com slash joyclicks for the video version of Jedi Knights alongside the video versions for all of our podcasts and anything else we do in their playlists on the channel. If you would like the audio version of jedi knights you can check it out on apple Podcasts, spotify or your service of choice rating ranking reviewing would be appreciated if you can do it on your service because it does help the show out a ton and if you want to help us out further patreon.com slash joy clicks at the one and five dollar levels five dollar tier will give you producer credit on this show and every show we do like aaron easton and charles applin so thank you very much and that is episode 95 of jedi knights we're gonna hit a hundo sometime this year for sure there's more than five weeks left this year so oh for sure uh look forward to some cool news happening that week we'll, we'll be blessed for the big hundo mike we have to be uh yeah we gotta start preparing christian i'm looking at the calendar that's october 5th october 5th. so okay there's gonna be some big news that day disney's gonna bless us they screwed us over with trailer drops i i was gonna say this to you before we start recording today mike i guarantee you tomorrow we get a book of boba fett thing <laughs> yeah definitely uh, yeah it's, 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 <laughs> since, since, uh, since it's like september 1st or something yeah. like that we'll definitely get something that always happens with us long time yeah. listeners will know that christian and i have a horrible track record <laughs> with like star wars news getting announced like minutes after we finish filming <laughs> yeah so i'm sure that will not happen for us for 100 we'll get some cool we'll get the kenobi trailer bright and early 9 a.m we'll have day. some exactly and if not we'll have something cool cooked up for sure definitely so uh we will see you next week but until then we're fine everything's fine how are you may the force be with you oh yes 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 you're right beep is up